Colin Nixon at End Screen Media and I'm at NAB, NAB 2016 and I'm speaking with Simon Frost who is Head of TV Marketing for Ericsson. Uh, I very often talk with Simon at these shows and uh, Simon there was one thing I specifically wanted to talk with you about. Um, it seems to me that operators are facing a whole new marketplace where they're beginning to produce services, video services, that are much more customized to individual markets. A great example of that is um, Sling TV, for example, and, and Direct TV has just announced that they're gonna be doing a very similar thing. Um, are you seeing this in the marketplace in other regions as well? Is this something that's generally happening? Yeah, I think we are, and I think there's two big things, I think, reason why that's happening. One, there's certainly the feeling of competitive pressures from the new OTT players, the new entrances, so the Netflixes and others. It has shaped consumers' perception of TV, um, what they expect, how they expect to get their services, and also roughly how much they expect to pay for types of services. So I think there's a strong feeling that if you're in the business of aggregated pay TV, you should have an OTT offering, just as a, as a it's kind of a me-too service, I think. Um, and the other one, of course, is OTT delivery then gives you more reach. It gives you a distribution into new types of devices, new types of customers that perhaps you couldn't necessarily address with your pay TV platforms. If you were predominantly on satellite or on cable, for example, you know, an OTT reach gives you potentially new customers that also wouldn't necessarily subscribe to a 12-month commitment on pay TV. They quite like the fact that it'd be a rolling 12-month commitment. So I think we're seeing business, technology, and customer reasons for why pay TV operators are launching OTT services. So to do that, I mean, it could be a nightmare scenario because they could end up having to duplicate equipment that they already have in the, in the data center. Uh, and so they could end up with a whole bunch of new equipment to do the OTT stuff and the whole bunch of old equipment that they're using to do their traditional pay television services. Um, but you've got some new announcements, I think, that can help them out because we, what they really want to do is they want to be able to reuse that equipment, right? So talk, talk a little bit about how you can help them reuse it. Okay. Yeah, I think... The key thing is, I mean, the operators themselves are even consolidating, so this is making it even worse. They want scale across their platforms, and really, no one's going to be successful if you shift towards cloud-based models, DevOps-based models, and continued deployment of new features. You've got to keep get, keeping up with consumers and driving their agenda. So you need continuous development, you need continuous feature release of this stuff, and to do that, you need powerful cloud-based platforms that give you that agility, give you that speed. And so... Yeah, I think it's varying between the types of customers that are getting on that bandwagon to drive and use that technology at the heart. If you are, of course, launching an OTT service is a pretty easy thing if you've built your platforms for that. Ericsson's been focused with something we call media-first TV platform. So it was a next-generation cloud-based platform for pay TV and OTT. So at the show, we're announcing an extension of that family, a suite, a portfolio suite. So media-first TV processing is taking all of our compression portfolio, even including our bespoke silicon that we make for doing encoding, but taking that also with virtualizing every component of encoding, streaming, multiplexing, CA, DRM, all of the functions of the head end, virtualizing those and giving an agnostic layer of how you can deploy that across compute platforms. It may be private data center, it could be public data center, it could be private cloud, or in a head end in bespoke hardware because Ericsson's still committed to bespoke hardware because in certain you know key use cases you're still going to get better picture quality performance out of that. So tell me, I, I mean, virtualization sounds kind of abstract. Do you, do you have some real concrete examples of how I could use that to save myself money? Exactly. Yes. I mean, we all use the cloud word a bit too much. We talk about containers and virtualization. Let's bring it back to simple business benefits. I mean, cloud in general, efficiency and agility. When you have cloud, you can do DevOps, which means you can do continual deployment of new features. If we take this video compression type scenario, what we see from our customers is they want to have, they've probably got current infrastructure where they're doing a head end that's delivering linear channels and VOD assets, maybe an MPEG-2, maybe an MPEG-4, perhaps they're even gonna deploy an Ultra HD channel. But now they also want perhaps a disaster recovery site. Well, why not spin up your disaster recovery spot, uh, disaster recovery functionality on AWS, perhaps, in the public cloud? So ideally, you don't want to use your disaster recovery functionality. So do you want to build another head end with next generation technology? Or why not spin that up just in a cloud environment and have a lower risk, lower cost scenario? So that's just a simple example of how the next investment might be just cloud-based. And with all of these OTT services launching, um, that you've also come up with a way where a local operator can actually begin to participate in some of that revenue, right? Yes, so the, at Mobile Congress we announced something called the Unified Delivery Network. So it takes the technology of our media delivery network, which is 
CDN technologies, mobile specific optimizations, things like LT broadcast that we do as well. So we're taking that, but actually we've moved it up, if you like, in the value chain a little bit because we're basically becoming the CDN operator. So it's a, it's a collaboration model. So our technology goes into the operator's network, the mobile car operators or the telcos, the fixed telcos. We put our technology in and then we broker the relationships with the content guys. So the content guys get the win-win because they get better terms, they get access to the metadata for how their content's being consumed, they get to distribute their content even in more mobile optimized specific scenarios and mobile really is one of the key corner cases to solve for, mo yep. for video delivery and it's a win-win for the telco because in reality a lot of these telcos don't necessarily want to operate CDN functionality so the fact that Ericsson does it for them and brings them the revenue brings them the customers it's a win-win both ways that's really cool so they just get the check exactly <laughs> now you mentioned metadata um, this is a, of course uh, an area that continues to develop it's uh, it's absolutely critical it's something that everybody always seems to forget about but it's like the bedrock of what all of this media business is built on uh, you've uh, you've made some changes particularly in the US market uh, in that area as well haven't you exactly so we launched uh, NAB a global content discovery service it's actually built for the US expansion on an acquisition we just made of FYI television very recently so now we have the global capability to drive metadata around content and then move really into programmatic recommendation of content using our media first TV platform using our other platforms to really solve which is probably one of the scariest issues I think right now is you know in one of our recent consumer lab studies that we did 50% of customers that we spoke to consumers we spoke to with linear TV 50% are frustrated daily finding something to watch and in any other industry bells would be ringing that this is a massive massive issue this is going to be a big problem in the future so for me Delivering personalization recommendation of content is something that must be solved. There's quite a way to go, actually, in terms of algorithmic enhancements, building up these pools of data, data around the content itself and data around what the consumers are, where they are, what they're doing, what time of the day is it, what's the weather like outside, what mood are they in. It's about matching those things. But whoever solves that problem the best is going to be the most competitive differentiating in the future as the service provider. So, you know, we're working really hard to build the technology up to be able to enable our customers to solve that. Yeah, and in, and in a world where the pay television operator is having to compete head to head now with the OTT provider, keeping people's eyeballs on pay television is so important. So the recommendations and, uh, and search functionality, I think is becoming much more, is amplified in its importance in that environment. We, we firmly believe that pay TV has a very strong future. It already does. It's already the predominant method for you know, delivering TV. We hear about a you know, revolution called cutting, called shaving. You know, it's still snipping around the edges, to be honest. But yes, who better to aggregate virtually every source of content and provide a really great service to the consumer? I mean, it is the pay TV organizations. This is what we're trying to make sure everyone understands the opportunity behind because you know, equally, if we hang around for too long, how long will it be before someone else solves that problem about great recommendation that isn't in the pay TV business? I mean, someone may crack it otherwise. So I think the impetus is act now, but the opportunity is there. It sounds like we're sort of to loop back to the beginning of our conversation. It's, you know, pay TV isn't going to go away. It's going to evolve. It's going to change and uh, become more customized to, to the individual, right? It has to. You have to put consumers first. It's about delighting TV consumers. Indeed. Simon, always a pleasure. Thanks, have a Colin. great NAB 2016, and I'll see you again soon. Thank you. This has been Colin Dixon with Endscreen Media.